And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Say trumpet. Amen. Trumpets are loud, aren't they? Amen. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Amen. I want you to repeat after me, if you would, three things this morning. I tell you what, we'll just go ahead and repeat six things. I want you to repeat. The coming of the Lord is going to be visible. It's going to be literal. It's going to be powerful. Audible. That means you can hear it. Inevitable. Inevitable. Thank you. Joyful. Joyful. Say the coming of the Lord, of the Lord. is going to be, going to be joyful. joyful. The Bible says in Matthew 28, starting verse 1, the resurrection of Jesus, guards fell down as dead men. There's going to be power in the coming of the Lord. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen? It says that there at the tomb, the tomb was sealed. As you remember, when Jesus was in the tomb and they set guards, some people think there were two, some people think there were five, some people think there were sixteen. But no matter what, the Bible says an angel came and shook that tomb and it says the guards fell down as dead men. They fell down as dead men from the glory of one angel. Amen. Say the glory, the glory of one, one angel. angel. If one angel can do that, the Word of God states that when Jesus comes back in the cloud of glory, it don't say one angel is coming with Him. It don't say 5,000 angels are coming with Him. But it says all the angels in heaven. It says ten thousands of thousands of ten thousands is coming with Christ when He splits the eastern sky. Say it's going to be audible. It's going to be powerful. Amen. Can you imagine? Wow, they didn't have... Uh, thousands and millions and billions and trillions and quadruplillions or whatever in the Word of God. So the way that they told us in the Word of God was thousands of ten thousands of ten thousands times ten thousand. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a lot of power to me. Coming in the clouds of glory. Praise God. Praise God. Can you give the Lord a shout? It says in 1 Thessalonians 4.16, The Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with a trumpet of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first. I don't know about you, but I've heard a trumpet sound before. Man, I've seen it. I've heard a trumpet. Me and little Bobby. Where's little Bobby? We've heard a trumpet uh, and a trombone right up in our mud. This close. <laughs> You're talking about something deafening is the sound of a trumpet when it sounds. But the Bible says that a trumpet will sound yeah. and every ear will hear that trumpet Hallelujah. on the wow. face of the planet. Say it's going to be audible. Oh. It's going to be powerful oh. when Jesus steps out on a cloud of gold. Yes, Folks, I can't, I can't stress how close that coming of the Lord is going to be this morning. I can't stress that enough that the world is in convulsions and people are confused and they're running to and fro and they don't know where to find peace and they're looking money for peace and they're looking at this for peace and they're looking at that for peace. But the only real peace that we have is the peace that passes all understanding, peace and trusting in Jesus Christ, the one that died on Calvary's cross that's coming back with power. Word. Say on. power again. Power. Inevitable. That means Inevitable. that He's coming back whatever you believe. That's right. That means that day is going to come yes. regardless if you believe it or not. Amen. Regardless if you think it's 5,000 years from now, 5 million years from now, Jesus is coming back. That's a fact. Yes. The Word of God speaks it. It's the only absolute truth on the face yes. of the planet. Jesus is returning yes. in the clouds yes. of glory and it can be in the next five seconds. He's coming back. Your King is coming back. Sometimes we get so caught up with things that we forget about the Lord will return. And it says 
I want you to listen to me on this. It says, The day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. It says that nobody will be paying attention. Nobody will be awake. Everybody, even the church, will be sleeping unless you go to a powerful church like Praise Tabernacle. It's always awake and always ready for the coming of the Lord. But if you're sleeping in a pew somewhere, He's coming like a thief in the night. You don't want to be asleep when Jesus comes back. But you want to be aware of that time all through your lifetime. And every day and every second of the day, Jesus is coming back. With power. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? The Word of God says, Every eye shall see Him. In the clouds of glory. That's the just and the unjust. That's the saved and the lost. You will know that you've missed the coming of the Lord. If you're not ready. You will know. The Bible says He's coming back in the clouds of glory and every eye shall see Him. You will know if you miss the Lord. You will know it. And it'll be a dreadful, dreadful, dreadful day if it comes upon you like a thief in the night and you're not expecting it. Oh, I've heard so many preachers in these last days preach prosperity and plant a seed here and plant a seed there. And don't get me wrong, I believe in planting seeds and I believe in prosperity, but I believe winning souls is the priority of the church today. And I believe that coming to Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to somebody and it's still the best thing since ice cream and sliced bread. The Lord Jesus taking a hold of a lost and dying sinner and sitting him on the rock, the church, and saving his soul is still the most important thing in this world. Somebody coming to know the Lord. We preached about prosperity last week. You know I got money, but I believe in Jesus coming back. I'm not afraid to tell you I'm blessed. I'm not afraid. Now don't come bumming no money from me because let me tell you another scripture. Let me tell you another scripture. It says you're not a borrower, but you a lender if you know Jesus. So don't come to me and say, oh, I know the Lord. Can I bum $30? If you know you that thirty dollars plus a hundred fold on top of that thirty dollars. You know how to get it. Obey the word of God and be blessed, church, in the name of Jesus. Come on and give him a praise. God's gonna let you in on the seat. Psalms 50 says, Our God shall come and he will not keep silent. Listen, a fire shall go out before him. That's the glory of God. It says a fire will go before Him. You ever felt a fire in your spirit? You got so caught up in the Spirit of God and you quit thinking about the things around yeah. you yeah. and you felt like your fingertips were on fire and you couldn't hold still and you went to jump it up and down and you went, good God Almighty, the Lord is all over me. That's the fire of the Holy Spirit. That's the fire of God. It says that that same fire, when He comes, will come before the Lord. That's the glory of God coming on to this earth. Amen. And if you don't have the Lord in your heart, the Bible says that that fire will overtake you. That that fire, God don't need no nuclear weapon. He don't need an M60 tank. He don't need all of this stuff exploding and worlds exploding and people dying. He's got a fire that's coming before Him. He's powerful. He's loud. He's coming in the clouds of glory with ten thousands of thousands of thousands of angels and a fire before Him. Woo! Good God, I don't know about you, but I'm serving a powerful God. I'm serving a powerful God. That day of the Lord will be a joyful day. It will be the most joyful day that a Christian will ever know. This life is but a vapor. Yes. My wife and I's anniversary, 21 years, was on Groundhog's Day. You won't forget that if you married on Groundhog's Day. <laughs> we didn't plan it that way, but that's a good thing because I remember it. But we went to a place last night for a dinner that we had been going to for about 18 years. And we stopped for a couple of years and thought we could find a better place. But we didn't. So we went back to this place. And we said, my, my, my. 
Where did 21 years go? You know, some people dread going home. And some people dread being around their wives and their husbands. But I can't tell you how precious it is for me to be with my wife. I can't tell you how wonderful it is to have somebody when you slide a little bit will quote scriptures to you and pray for you and say you can do it one more time. Get strong again. I know you're weak right now, but I'll pray for you and you're going to get strong again. That's a good thing, folks. But time goes by so quickly when you're in love. Praise God. When you love somebody with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your mind. How many of you ever ever had a love like that? That you love some of you, some of them, about half of you ain't never had no love like that. You need some loving. Come on. Come on. I said it. I'll say it. you need some loving. You need somebody to understand when you're down, to understand when you're depressed, to understand when you're about to give up, to understand when you're going to resign, understand when you quit your job and go full time in the ministry, understand that you're going to read the word, whether they read it or not, understand and lay with you at night and tell the Bible over and over and over to you until you get strong again. You need somebody in your life like that. Come on. You don't need somebody that's always going through a bunch of junk and drama and got one foot in the world and one in the church and acting all self-righteous while they got it all together. You don't need somebody like that. you got plenty of them. Just come to church. Don't pick somebody from the church. You might get a retard or a psycho. That was funny. I don't care who you are. That was funny. God, that was funny. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because <laughs> people in church, real churches, have got problems. You don't need to add to your problems. You need to help the psychos. Help the retard. Help those that can't help themselves. Help them. Help them. Help them. But find you somebody that's as sane as you are so you can both put your twos and your aces together and help more than one person. Amen. Amen. If you've got drama in your life, you don't need to add more drama. Time is short. You need somebody to love you and you can love them back. Yeah, that's right. Come on. There's somebody for everybody. Amen. When God closes one door, He'll open another one for you. Yeah. But you can't take just the next best thing that comes along. You've got to take a Holy Ghost filled, sold out, God loving, Bible thumping, on fire, dancing, yeah. joyful. Yeah. With the fire going out before them, filled with the Holy Spirit. Somebody that loves God with all of their heart. When you find somebody like that, folks, you found a jewel. You found the gold in amongst all the coal. You found a diamond. You better hang yeah. on to them and hang on to them for dear life. Because time goes by quickly. Every moment is precious in this life. Amen. Every moment is another moment to witness that God has changed me and He can change you. Amen. Every moment is so precious of life. And God put us here though so we could tell others about Him. Period. That's the reason why you are here. You ask for why you're here. You're here to get strong in the Lord and bring somebody else to God. Yes. What else can you ask for? Glory to God. I'm the happiest person on the face of the earth. I don't come to a boring church where you have to throw a stick of dynamite up in a pew to get the people to move. I come to a place where folks really love me. Where folks will really pray for me. Where they can shout and dance and cry or whatever they want to do in the name of Jesus. Good God Almighty. You know what's that like? What's that like? But when you got that, folks, when you've got a good church, when you've got a good spouse, come on, when you got love in your life, time goes by so quickly. 21 years of my marriage seems like just yesterday. But it's the same in our Christian walk with God. This walk goes so quickly. 